Hi, I'm Beth. Um, I'm trying something a bit new. Um, I know you probably have seen lots of people that have started YouTube channels and started doing videos and whatnot. And you think, gosh, do we need any more? But I'm doing it, and I'm doing it in the name of tinnitus and to bring awareness to tinnitus and particularly to those that are young that suffer from tinnitus. Um, I'd also like to be almost like a champion to have a bit more of a positive narrative for people that suffer from tinnitus um, because it can be really daunting and really horrible and very frustrating but I want to bring some positivity to that and if we can talk about it and help each other then that would be great. So I've had tinnitus for almost 10 years now um, so I'm going to be going through 10 things that I've learned in that last in the 10 years of having tinnitus. Um, so the first thing is that yes it is annoying and <laughs> What's more annoying is when people say to you, oh, that must be really annoying. Um, that's something that you probably can't get over, like it's something that will always be quite annoying, um, but it is what it is. Um, I think the more you emphasise the fact that it is annoying, then it will probably piss you off. Um, but yeah, that's one thing I've learned, that it is annoying. Um, the next thing is that you shouldn't apologise for it. Um, I know that in the first instance, and to this day really, I do say to a lot of people, oh I'm sorry I didn't quite catch that, I'm sorry could you repeat that, I'm ever so sorry I can't really hear that, um, which although it's polite, obviously, us Brits, um, it's actually not really my fault, sometimes people mumble, sometimes the environment isn't really good for you, um, and that's not really you having to apologise for that, so that's something that I'm kind of still working on, um, but I think it's something that's pretty good to move forward with, like you don't have to always apologise for it, because it is something that isn't, at the end of the day, your fault. Um, another thing, always wear earplugs in noisy environments, and I mean this in situations like gigs, theatre shows, concerts, anything that has a really big um, sound system or sound situation, always wear earplugs, I think that's just good practice anyway, even if you don't have tinnitus, you should always get earplugs for those situations. Protect what you have people. Um, so I definitely recommend that. I have a blog post on my blog um, that I'll link somewhere um, of the earplugs that I have that I got from Amazon that are really good, they're really small and they come in a little case that glows in the dark, which is perfect for gigs. Um, the next thing, know your triggers and know what aggravates it. For me, um, loud noises can make it worse, um, alcohol can make it worse, but you know, that's not going to stop me from having a drink. And sometimes if I have a lot of coffee, um, and I say coffee instead of caffeine because I drink a lot of tea as well, um, so I don't actually think it's the caffeine that's affecting me, although it does affect others, um, I think it is the something else in the coffee that I don't really know what it is that sometimes makes me perceive the tinnitus as louder if I've had too much coffee. Um, another thing, and I think this is really important, is to just be kinder to yourself. I think given the current situation, I think everyone should practice this. Um, but you can go through some really dark days with tinnitus. Um, I know that I have like some really bad days. I think that's normal anyway, but I think if you have something like tinnitus or anxiety or any kind of impairment of some variety, um, I think it just exasperates it and this current situation definitely has made my tinnitus worse um, and I think it's a combination of things. Um, so again, this is something that I am still working on to try and be kinder to myself and it's something that I think we should all do, um, particularly at the time. Um, another thing that I've learned, that not every streaming service has good subtitles facilities and this is something that really, really pisses me off. I rely on subtitles, um, I'm sure many people that suffer from tinnitus or any hearing issue do rely on subtitles, um, some actors just mumble, so subtitles are required, um, but not every streaming service has a good setup, so they don't necessarily have like the best accessibility features, and I mean that for any kind of accessibility um, help that you need. Um, I'm not going to name particular ones because I don't really think that's fair, but they don't seem like I think the best one is Netflix, and I think that's primarily because it's been around for the longest and they do.
do have a lot of very good accessibility features and their subtitles are on point, whereas others either lag or there's no option for it, like there's certain iPlayers that don't have the facility for subtitles when you're watching it on a smart TV, which I think is ridiculous. Um, and that's frustrating, like I can get by without, I'm quite fortunate in that situation, but it, it, I get really tired like having to figure out what people are saying and missing certain things and if actors don't move their mouth very well <laughs> or if they mumble, I struggle a lot. Um, so that's a frustration but it's something that I've learned that not every service is going to be right for you um, and can be a bit frustrating. Um, which I think in this day and age is something that could be improved. And that leads me on to the next thing, which is why are restaurants so loud? <laughs> um, that's something I've noticed, I think more so with having to notice that restaurants are so damn noisy. And this is more than just the general like hubbub -hub -hub of people and like, you know, restaurant noises. It's the music is so loud in some of these places. I don't want to feel like I'm in a nightclub when I'm enjoying a meal. And I, I think with tinnitus, because you have a perception issue, that even if someone is sat right in front of me, I struggle to hear them and I can hear other things. And if the music's really loud, then I just, I lose it all. And it's just not an enjoyable experience for me. Um, and that's, that's something that I think restaurants could really work on. I know um, there have been a few charities out there um, that have compiled a list of noisy restaurants. Um, and they've put the actual decibels of the music, uh, and I think that's good. I'm not really sure if it's changed any of the behaviours of restaurants, but I hope it does in the future, because even if you have pretty good hearing, it can be pretty difficult in, in certain situations, and that's no fun for anyone. Um, another point um, is to just tell people sooner rather than later. I think it's just so everyone's on the same page, like, I know it can be awkward having that conversation, saying, like, I have an issue where I can't really hear very well, and it's tinnitus, and trying to explain that can be a bit frustrating at times, but I think if you tell people, um, most people are alright with it, like, no one's going to be like, oh my gosh, that is ridiculous. Um, people are kind of interested in it, if they don't really know what it is, um, so I think it's something that you shouldn't feel weird about talking to people about it. And also, don't be afraid to tell people when you can't hear them, or tell them when something's not quite working for you. Like, don't try not to feel very awkward about that. Like, one example is when I went to my GP a few years ago, um, they were giving, <laughs> answering people's names um, really quietly and I kind of missed my name and I was a, a friend was with me at the time and she said oh like she's deaf like can you just speak up a little bit which isn't necessarily the right description for me I don't really know where I fall in that um but the <laughs> so the nurse bless her was really exaggerating how she was talking and like basically shouting at me when I got into the the, the consultancy room um so that to which I was like I'm not that deaf like as like I got tinnitus like it was just the wrong phrase. Um, so don't be afraid to kind of say like what your limitations are in the tinnitus situation. Um, and the last one, this is really important and it's probably the hardest thing, is to accept it. Like when you're diagnosed with tinnitus the first thing they kind of say is that there's no cure and there's some treatments but they're not kind of there's no guarantee that they're going to work and so on and you hear a lot of negative stuff about it. And I think like just accepting that this is it is probably the best thing to do. Um, it's really not easy, like it doesn't happen overnight, it's probably taken me about 10 years to properly accept it. Uh, and even still I have like bad days and good days and, and whatnot and sometimes I just think oh this is so annoying. But it's, I know that there is no cure and me trying to fight that is not going to help me, in fact it's only going to make it worse. So trying to accept it accepting it for what it is and trying to understand it a bit more will help. Um, so that's kind of my 10 things that I've learned in the 10 years of having tinnitus. Um, it's an ongoing process and it's still a journey as they say. Um, so thank you very much for watching, I hope this has been useful. Um, let me know um, if you have tinnitus or how long you've had it and what you do to deal with it and what kind of things you've learned 
in the time of tinnitus, um, it'd be really good to open up that conversation. Um, so thank you very much. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Not the best.